Alexis here to talk about uh, analyzing mobile devices in Python uh, using both uh, the, the A-leap and the I-leap or the, or the X-leap as uh, he has here, uh, module frameworks. Uh, so I'm very excited to learn more. As I, as I mentioned this morning, um, we have integrated an I-leap and A-leap uh, into um, kind of uh, for autopsy. The next release has A-leap and the full I-leap. So we're very excited uh, you know, for that. And welcome, Alexis. I think, I think it's your first time presenting uh, although you've been a past attendee, is that correct? Uh, that is, that is correct. I've All been right. uh, a past attendee, yeah. All right. So uh, just so everyone knows, so Alexis is, is the last speaker. Uh, after that, we have some lightning talks. So take it away, Alexis. Well, thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm really excited. It's my first time uh, presenting here at the conference. Um, it's, a, it's a great honor to do that and for myself and also on behalf of all the folks that work on uh, I leap and, and a leap. That's why I put here on the slide X leap. Can I represent both? Um, these are uh, a framework that uh, does uh, forensics on iOS devices as well as Android devices, right? So, um, so let's let's just let's just get to it. All right, like I said, I use my name. Um, I'm from Orlando, Florida, and I work for the FBI. And I say this only for identification purposes only. I'm not here speaking on behalf of the FBI. It's kind of a project that I do on my on my own free time, uh, you know, for the community and to collaborate with other examiners and, and researchers as, as well. So I'm um, speaking on my own behalf. All right. And like I said, this is not my project it's our project. It's a project that belongs to the community. And before I even explain what the project is, I want to do a couple of shout outs that are really, really important. Uh, first to Sarah Edwards, if, if you're watching this presentation later and you haven't seen her presentation from earlier in the day, stop what you're doing, don't watch me, <laughs> go watch her first, and then come back to me when you're done, right? Um, her research has been uh, seminal in this um, in this field, uh, the work that can be done with iOS uh, devices, the databases that are contained within it, our eyes were open based on her research, and I've been informed by her research, and um, I'm, I'm really grateful uh, for her generosity to ch share that with us. So. Um, this software it owes a lot about, uh, to her, both in, in spirit and, and some of the research that she, that she has done, okay? Second, I would like to thank Yogesh Katri. He, he has taken, again, great researcher. He has great uh, open source tools to uh, parse uh, Mac devices, uh, you know, Mac OSs. You gotta go and check, check that out. It's fantastic. And he's really mentored me in regards to my development with working with Python and becoming a better uh, coder and developer. So again, I am in debt to him, and last but not least, you know, world famous, well known by everybody here, Mark McKinnon. Um, he definitely helped and and took over and 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 made sure that uh, I leap could be integrated with autopsy. Also helped me understand how to compile certain things to make it you know usable for every everybody. So again, thank you so much, Mark. Uh, again, I owe you also a debt of gratitude. All right. So, and, and again, I. There's a bunch of people that contributed. I'm sorry I can't go through each contribution of everybody because we'll be here an hour, but go check them out here in this link in my blog. Um, everybody from researchers, testers, and people that develop code, I'm, I'm in debt to you as well, and the community. So thank you so, so much, all right? So we know who, who's work on this project, who, you know, make it be. So what is the project? <laughs> Well, like I mentioned, iLeap, iOS Logs Events and Preferences Parser, and A-Leap Android Logs Events and Protobuf Parser, right? Because, you know, there's no P list properly in, in Android. So let's put Protobuf so we can keep the P, <laughs> all right? And, uh, and what you do is uh, pretty much it's, uh, it's fairly easy. You just take a forensic image in tar, uh, zip, or a logical extraction of folders and files in those folders and feed it to the, to the framework and Python, it's made in Python 3, and then it, it will parse it for you. So I'm going to give a demo. Again, another thanks to Brian. Um, he did this, Brian Moran, he did this uh, logo here, kind of throwback to the good days of Atari, uh, you know, kind of promoting the, the software. So let's let's see how this works. So you see here the, uh, the, the GUI interface. Let me go back a little bit. Um, pretty much on the top line, you select the, uh, the file, um, the extraction, and then the bottom file, you select uh, the output, right? Where where would that uh, the output where it will be saved within your system? So in this case, I'm taking an image from Josh Higman's test images, uh, publicly available, an iOS uh, image. Go check them out; they're really well documented. So if you want to do research in this area, make sure you get Josh's images. He has different versions of iOS, 
It also has Android uh, uh, images as well. You can see here on the left, you will see here different artifacts that, um, that the software parses. You can select or deselect to your heart's content. There are a few that are a bit heavy, like the photos uh, artifact, because it's, it's pulling actual pictures out to the report folder. Um, now they're uh, unclicked by default, so that way you know your processing time is faster. But you can enable them by hitting select all, and you hit the software and it goes. Okay, so with the magic of time lapse here, we're gonna go quickly all the way to the end. And again, this is not doesn't take that long. Um, this extraction takes all around six minutes and you get a, a whole bunch of data. So after it's done, what oh, if I hit play, that would be better. And then uh, what you get is when you're done, there'll be a pop-up that will tell you that the report is completed, where is the report located? And it will automatically, uh, there it is, and it will automatically open the HTML report format for you to browse. And, and there it is, all right? Now, what does this report uh, tell you? Well, the report uh, gives you a lot of some information here. So the first screen tells you how long it, the processing took. Um, there's a nice little toggle that Yogesh added that makes it dark because you know it's better for our eyes. And there's a little bit of device details, which I find really interesting. If you're doing uh, capture the flags with iOS devices, give give iLeap a try. It will help you with a few questions, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and then on the left, you see all the parse artifacts um, for that extraction. For example, here we see some information about the cellular connections. You see here the connected devices, which means what devices uh, were plugged into the iOS device to make a backup. And something you will notice here on the left is every time I click on a device, it kind of resets the menu. Well, uh, as of yesterday, uh, that was fixed. So now the scroll on the left doesn't reset every time you change an artifact. It stays put, which makes actually so much better. So you don't have to go in, you know, go crazy going back and forth, up and down. Now it just resets. So you can check that on my Twitter and it's already merged, committed into, into iLeap. So you can download that and, and have the little usability functionality. Okay, here you see some Discord messages that uh, it parses for you. So it parses also some third-party apps. This, I'm really proud of the work that Yogesh did and we both did on this. This is the KTX uh, for the app snapshots. These files, I think were the first open source tool that actually deals with KTXs uh, that you can actually see them. Before that, you have to either have a uh, you know paid third-party tool or actually have the KTX in a Mac and open them in a Mac to be able to see them. But now you can use iLeap and give that a look. And Yogesh also has that code standalone open source. So you can look at any KTXs that are generated by iOS and you can look at them at your heart's content. Um, I also have here a little a note, a report here for iOS notifications. The first four fields is like the, the key fields. And on the last field has everything that, that, that uh, notification carries. And you know this is a living project, right? Uh, we keep enhancing it and streamlining it as we go along. You see here a little bit of a iOS mail report. You can there select all entries and do a search across that artifact. So let's say we're gonna look here for Discord, then it will just pull out the entries corresponding to Discord. So you see here we're one of five in a total of you know whatever the amount of emails uh, were parsed, right? So you can filter in HTML, do a lot. Uh, both filtered by that, uh, that any field, time, name, um, and or by actually typing what you want, right? This artifact here, what you see is, and I'm gonna pause it real quick. It's a, uh, it shows you the icons in a grid that were on the screen by the bundle ID, which again, it's pretty unique. I think also kind of unique for us. For example, screen number one, you see all the different applications and how they're placed on the screen. The bigger ones on the top are folders that have apps within them and i'm going to streamline that uh, streamline it so it looks a little bit better that's a big uh, big blob of text <laughs> um but oops i hit forward instead of backwards but that's pretty much how it works all right now there's that's the that's the first main uh output mode of the software right the html report we have another output mode which is the um uh, sqlite and, uh, and mapping functionality. So let's start with the mapping one. So you see here in this folder, when you open the report folder, it's named a leap or I leap reports and then a timestamp. So you know, you know what day you did it and at what time. And then the first folder here is underscore KML. It takes all the different uh, geolocation points in an iOS device and puts them in KMLs. So you can import that into your mapping application. I also made a SQLite database that has also those same data points 
but for all the artifacts that you see in that folder. And the, the good thing about that is that you can then say, okay, I want to see e any geolocation artifact that the tool pulled for a specific point in time. So I could say for 24 hours, for two days, three days. And that way you can kind of show in one map all those points. What you do is you take the the, uh, the spread the uh, SQLite database and you just export what you need and as a text file and feed it into Google Maps and you can see that. So you have multiple geolocation artifacts in just in one map as opposed to you know one category per map. Hopefully that makes sense. The second mode is the timeline mode. This one's this what's inspired by how Apollo shows things. Obviously they're they're different and Sarah uses JSON now, which is actually fantastic. It's it's great. Um, it's a little bit more simple, but it's pretty much all the different uh, artifacts that have uh, that, that that were parsed by the tool in a timeline fashion. So you can go and just say, okay, I want to look for the data in this particular day, and you can see all the artifacts as they were occurring at that particular point in in time. So it's 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 I think it's really useful. It's going to pinpoint areas of interest, and then you can expound on that on your on your uh, casework. You can see there on the right all the information that's tied to that artifact. If it's chats, if it's a geolocation thing, if it's an application that's you sent to the background or whatever it was, you can see it there in in the context of time and, and against each other, which I think is pretty useful. All right. And then I'm going to fast forward a little bit. And then the TSV export. So here, all the artifacts uh, have a TSV component. And this is useful if you want to take that data and maybe put it in another tool for doing an analytics. Um, and I selected TSV for tab separated. So that way I don't have any issues if somebody's chatting and I export a chat and then decided to use quotations or commas or stuff like that. That way your import doesn't get messed up. Um, tab is not something that you usually come across uh, people using when they're chatting or doing uh, other things. Hopefully that makes sense. So you take all those TSVs and you can import it into different tools um, for do a further analysis. Um, this is something that Autopsy now leverages, again, thanks to Mark, and we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, it takes those TSVs and is able to uh, present them within the Autopsy interface, which is fantastic because now you can have all your casework, including your, your uh, mobile extraction analysis in one place, uh, which I, I definitely appreciate. All right. Now, this is a new feature that uh, had just been recently added, and I find pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it takes the geolocation points and generates a map for you. So what you'll see here is me leaving my house, and I'm driving down to go to the dentist. I get my dental work done, and if you saw those blue points, it's a legend here on the right. Those blue points are some Wi-Fi's that it, it kind of came across as I'm going down, which I thought also is pretty neat. Um, and then after that. I think I go and have lunch or something. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, so, and then I think I went and bought some stuff at a store. So I did, I forgotten, so I came back, bought some stuff. And then I went to my office. So I'm chilling in my office for a little bit. And then after that, because I'm doing stuff, so it takes a little bit longer. <laughs> and then at that, I go home, right? So I've used this uh, looking at, it's a new feature, but I've used some of my test data. And it's amazing because if you have enough of these, you can see patterns across time, right? You can figure out, knowing nothing about the case, you can tell, all right, this person lives at this place and works at this place. You can make those inferences by looking just at this, the, 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 the line move around the map, right? This person is there from eight to five, right? And spends from five to eight in this other place. And whenever there's deviations on that, then you can pick up on them. And again, I wanna mention Sarah again, because she's really brought the pattern of life analysis to the forefront on mobile examinations. And this is part of that, um, that um, some of the things that she says that I also try to emphasize in my own work, that pattern of life analysis. You can look at the map, how the map moves around in the amount of time that you have, you know, geolocation points, and you can gather a lot of, of data. If you could do that to a particular point in time where suspicious activity, you know, is part of your case, then you're gold. And all this within the HTML. So it's pretty, pretty neat feature. I'm gonna. I had to. Um, I'm gonna release it fully soon in the next couple of days. I just had to make sure that it could compile so people can use the uh, executable in Windows. And I'll talk about that more in a second. All right. So a leap is pretty much it's the same thing. The difference is that 
the graphical user interface is, is uh, green. It's not a kind of brownish. The artifacts obviously are different. They're responsive to uh, Android, but the output most are the same. You got your HTML report, you have your timeline, you have your KMLs if there's any to be had, and, uh, and, and, the, and the tab separated value files. So I'm gonna fast forward on this. It looks just like um, iLeap. If there's any, this we see here scrolling is, you know, the status of the run. If there's any errors, you'll see them there. Um, those same errors will show up in the script run log here on the screen where it says case information. The middle tab will have if there's any errors or any problems, you know, pretty much the output you saw there, you see it there too. And same thing, you can go through different uh, artifacts, call logs or whatever it is and, and go through it, okay? And again, same, same functionality. All right. So now we understand, you know, who made the software, what is it, what it can do for you, different modes of output to parse that data in your mobile extractions. So why, why we did this? Well, first of all, we want to help investigators that don't have maybe the budget to do certain things. And that's understandable. I, I teach overseas and sometimes the tools may reside in the big cities and maybe the investigator in a province doesn't have the the access to the tool to parse the, the image. So now there's an, a, a possibility to be able to do that work um, immediately, no matter where you are at a, at a cost that's affordable, right? Um, also, you know, I, I wanted this project to be part of the open source, uh, you know, mobile forensic, free mobile forensic tool set. So we can build upon each other and, and provide those capabilities, make them accessible. This also works as a, a triage tool. And even if you have the tools that are the expensive, you know, third party bot tools, this could also serve a purpose as a triage tool. I'll explain that in the next couple of slides. It's also this type of projects uh, serve as a testing and validation framework. And I will tell you an example of, um, I did some parsing in the mobile installation logs and um, I run our our scripts and I compare them to another third party paid tool and I found a difference. And the difference led me to under, to re recognize that the times that the, uh, the paid tool was showing me, if I offset the times, it was offsetting that time. Let's say I am in um, you know Eastern time. If I put it Pacific, change the, the, file, the uh, times in the case, it would change with all the, the times, it offsets. Well, it so happens that this artifact the mobile installation artifacts in Windows, I'm sorry, in iOS, they cannot be offset because they're local time to the device. Hopefully that makes sense. So you can't just, it's not UTC, you can't be offsetting those times with the other times in the case. Those times need to stay as they are. So we contacted the vendor, let them know, and it was immediately fixed. But the point is, the point is this, right? You might want to do testing and validation. It goes both ways. Maybe I see something from another tool, I compare it to my output of my tool, and I can figure out, well, I need to update this, there's been a change or my output is incorrect and we help each other. Always do testing and validation, okay? The, 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 the reports that the tool gave you is not the data. The data is the data and you need to validate and test every, anything and everything that matters in your case, all right? And one way is by doing this, running different tools um, on, on, the same, on the same input and see what the output is. And this, uh, I live in a -Lib is another way of being able to, um, you have a new artifact, something you discovered, you can prototype it, put it in, in the framework and have an, a nice looking output that you can share and, and start working with and share with the community and, and build it, build it out in a pretty, you know, fairly quick fashion if you know a little bit of Python, okay? Use cases, triage, I was mentioning a second ago. Um, Ed Michaels from OPD, Orlando Police Department, a good friend of mine, um, he was telling me that he uses uh, these, these, these tools to triage. Imagine you have a case where you have 20 different mobile devices, you image them, and at that point you need to figure out which, what to focus on. If you use your main you know, pay tools, it takes a long time to, par to process most of them, and, and you wanna make sure you maximize your time. So you can run ALeap or iLeap on those images. You get a quick output in five minutes. Um, you can look at a lot of that data and you can determine, okay, this is what I need to really then dig with other tools. And I'll be honest, sometimes the output that ALeap and ALeap give you it's more than enough to do, do your case and be done, okay? But that's another way of using for triage. So you're in a lab, same thing, just you do images, use ILIB and ALIB, do some triaging. Um, also another way of looking at the data that might help the investigator, okay? 
If you're doing research, like I mentioned, a way of quickly prototyping the tool exports the the data from the image, parses it, and gives you the output. You don't have to worry about handling any of that. Okay. I mentioned validation a second ago and automation. Um, a leap and iLeap have also a command line, you know, terminal option. So you can then make the, the software part of your tool chain where you can actually automate it, have a script that goes calls one tool, calls the other tool, calls a leap, calls I leap, and go from there. Okay. All right. So in the lab first, because it's Python, it's multi-platform. Okay. So it works on all of these. I tested it in, in this in these different versions. The most which I mentioned is the command line or terminal. And just hit hit help, a leap or i leap, and it will tell you what op what the options are. You you give it the type if it's a zip file or a tar file, whatever it is, the output where it goes, and the input where the file that you're gonna parse is. And you give those, and it runs. And what you see, what you will see is this output kind of log output. You see it on your screen as it's parsing the things, and when it's done, it will tell you that it's completed, how long it took, and where to go get it. Which obviously will be the the directory that you provided to it. But in case you forgot, it's gonna be here at the bottom and you can go and open your report and go from there, okay? So that's the terminal command line option. And the GUI, the graphical user interface, which I already showed you uh, a couple of videos of, of how, how it works, okay? Now, um, if you're gonna use it, right, straight up the scripts with Python, there's some requirements. I put some of them here because Aleep and Ileep do a lot of things. They don't only do SQL databases, they do all sorts, it, it can do all sorts of, uh, of artifacts. It's up to your knowledge and your imagination, okay? So you can do pip install minus r requirements.txt to make sure that you install all those requirements and then just run it. And there is the GitHub link um, where you can go get um, uh, a leap and I leap, you can download it from there, okay? Also, there's a new mode. It's just you know a few days ago with a new release of Autopsy 4.17. And I'm super excited about this. And again, I, I thank Brian and his team to, to bring this to fruition. Um, when you use Autopsy to run um, iLeap, it has a Windows executable in it, which is really fantastic because you don't have to worry about downloading the script and doing any PIP, PIP requirement installs and all that mess. You just run it and the executable is there. Okay. Um, it takes the the input, I'm sorry, the tool output and shows it, shows it to you on the on the interface. So let me show you that. Yeah, this future release will have a leap integration and even more artifacts will show up on the autopsy uh, interface. So what you do is you run autopsy, you look for the ingest module. There's one called iOS analyzer for iLeap. iLeap. So you click that in. And then when it's done, it will show you the main screen. The left is the extracted content. The right, you will see you know what was pulled by iLeap. And let's kind of zoom in. You see here the ones that are currently, some of the ones that are currently uh, supported, but more on the way for the next release. Again, super excited about that. And uh, um, also really important is that even if they're not supported right now, all the artifacts, Autopsy does create within the module output a full, it's a full run of an eye leaps. You can go in there and then look at all the reports that I showed you a second ago, the HTML, timeline, KMLs, everything will be in the uh, module output folder within Autopsy. So you can go and look what you have on your Autopsy interface. And you thought, you know what? I know I leave made some KML, some mapping. Let me, let me, let me look for that. Then you can go into that folder and, and get to it. Okay. So which I think is pretty neat also. Um, since I mentioned the executable, I do Windows releases also within my GitHub page. So you go to the GitHub page for Aleep and Aleep on the right side under releases you can download the, that Windows binary. So again, you can run it on Windows without having to deal with Python itself, if that, if that makes sense. All right. So how does it work? And this is kind of the, a bit of the technical part. So the first thing that the, the software does for you with Python is automation, right? And and this is the, and I rec there's two things I think examiners should be looking towards the future in regards to the skill sets. One is learning a little bit of coding it doesn't have to be Python. I like Python, but um, for different reasons, but learn some coding and also try to learn some reverse engineering. And I think the days of examiners just using tools and pressing buttons, that's gonna be gone in the future. And I'm all for pressing buttons, but we shouldn't be button pushing examiners, right? We should be actual examiners, which means we need to understand the data structures and understand how to manipulate them better. So 
I for and I I'll mention that in a second. I have a little class that I made in in YouTube for ex, for examiners, it's, uh, designed for examiners to learn Python and for parsing artifacts with Python. So if you're interested, I'll show it in a second. Uh, link for that where you can learn step by step. So I think it's 24 videos. You can learn some Python um, because I believe the skill set that will be really important uh, moving forward. What the tool does is is looks or kind of grab searches the evidence source for the artifacts. It could be a, a, a folders, files within folders, one file. It depends on how you define it. And after it does that, it will uh, call a script to parse it, and then it will give you the options of how to report on it. Okay. We can do SQLite, as you can see here on the left. It's a SQLite query there. You can do protobuf, and I have uh, the tool itself has different. Ex uh, artifacts scripts that you can look as, as a ponies or examples, okay? It can do binary files, you name it, it's Python, it's open, you can do it, okay? So I know this is really small, but my point is not to show the, the, the text, my point is to show the structure, and I will zoom in to what's important in, in a second. So this is a typical artifact, like the structure. What you see on the top will be your imports, your library imports in Python. So if you know Python, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know, go to my YouTube, watch the videos, and, and you will learn, okay? So you import what you need to do your parsing for that artifact. If it's a SQLite database, then you import a SQL, the SQLite libraries you know, or modules, you do that. Then after that, um, after uh, ILEAP and ALEAP uh, find the artifact, that location is going to be returned to you so you can manipulate it, okay? And then you do your magic. In this case, it's a SQLite uh, queries, but if it's something else, then you do something else. If it's opening a file to read it, if it's a protobuf to parse protobuf, if it's um, whatever it is, XML, do your magic. And then your results from your magic, you're gonna provide them to this functions that we have here for reporting, okay? And then, and, and um, Alip and Alip do that for you. And then you're gonna start that report, you're gonna name that report, the report is done and we're done, all right? So that's the main kind of structure. Let's zoom in to the part that we care about, which is the Alip, Alip, Alip part. All right. So here, in this case, this is the SQLite example. So here are my results, right? If my usage entries or, you know, my results are more than zero, then, okay, I have them all here on this list. I'm going to then append them to the data list. The data list is what will be shown as data on the reports, okay? And then after I do that, I put my data there, I define the report title here, all right? I also report here down here the category. So what's green, you name it whatever you want to name it. And then after that, you put the headers that go with that data list. So the data is there is 11, uh, well, 12 rows. Then you're going to have 12 headers down here. You're going to match. Okay. So you can name your headers. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it will create that HTML report. You're going to take those same two lists, the data and the data headers, data list, data headers, and you provide them to the TSV function and it will create a tab separated value file for you. Done. You go then. If it's if it has a timestamp at the beginning, you know, like a a, a time at the beginning of the uh, at row zero at the beginning, then call timeline activity the t the timeline uh, function. Boom! It will be added to the SQLite timeline output. And if it has, and if your output has fields that are called lati latitude or longitude, if it has them both, then call the KML generation uh, function and it will do the KMLs for you. As simple as that. Okay. These are the parts, you only change the, the things in green in the screen, okay? As long as you have your data, you know, your magic has been executed, okay? And that's it, it will create all of those. This is where I was telling you a second about, about resources. If you go to this link, you will find videos on how to make artifacts in ALEAP and ILEAP, all right? So I go from the beginning also like how to do it, where to place them. Um, for example, um, ILEAP is iOS version aware. So you don't have to tell uh, the software, hey, I'm going to give you an iOS 9, iOS 11, iOS 12 image. You need to do that. Um, Ily figures it on its own. And you can make your artifacts aware because, and again, I hark back to what Sarah was saying earlier today, um, a query or a file in iOS 9 um, might be, even though it's named the same, might have some changes compared to that same file in iOS 13 or iOS 14 or whatever it is, okay? so. I teach you how to make your artifacts aware of version. That's an example of that. There's a video for that. 
the, the DIFR, Digital Forensics and Incident Response Python Study Group course. That's the one I told you about. We teach you how to do Python for forensics. You can go check it out um, in a step-by-step. -step. I also have general purpose English and Spanish uh, forensic videos, and I'm trying to create more Spanish content um, because I believe there's a need uh, uh, for that really specific, not so much incident response, but straight up forensic, data forensics is uh, part of that. So I know I have some colleagues from Latin America listening, and I will we'll get some of this content in Spanish to you as well. So, okay. So with that, um, it was a brief overview of what the software does. I want to mention a few more things before I leave. And, and again, uh, Python, it's an environment that is good for working in forensics because there's many libraries that you can leverage, okay? And if you're not familiar with the language and how it will benefit your cases, I suggest you to take the opportunity, this presentation, to feel motivated, to check the software out and try to see if you can learn, you know, and, and add to it and learn how to parse artifacts. You will come across new data sources or data sources that are maybe, maybe not new, but are not supported by the tools. Maybe third-party tools, paid tools don't support them and you need them now. <laughs> so I would say consider a leap and leap to do that, right? Like I mentioned a second ago, the tool reports are not the data. The data is the data, right? You need to validate everything that matters. So either the output of these tools or others, make sure you, you eyeball it, make sure you got the output that you need that is correct and, and go forth and continue saving the world. And again, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Alexis. That's a lot of great stuff there and a lot of great uh, parsing in there. And uh, there's an endless amount of artifacts for it to be parsed. And so we're excited to have that the integration in and uh, get things in there. So uh, I know there's a bunch of questions for you on Discord. We are out of time on your time slot to keep us on the schedule. So uh, if you could jump over there and uh, answer some questions, that would be appreciated. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again next year. So. Thank you so much.